We're here with Chris Lai, who is the product manager for Jade Empire, which is coming out soon from uh, Microsoft Game Studios and BioWare. Um, it's going to be crunch time, so how's, uh, how's the game coming along? Oh, the game is making, uh, you know, a lot, there's a lot of stuff coming together. You know how it is in crunch time. The changes come fast and furious, but we've been doing, like, uh, play tests almost every week. Our usability guys have been really hammering at it, and the results we're getting back are great. Excellent. There's been some question about the uh, combat system in Jade Empire. Some people seem to think it's turn-based, other people think it's uh, basically just pounding buttons and things like that. Could you maybe go into uh, the combat system a little bit? Oh, sure, you bet. So when Bioware looked at the you know combat system for Jade, they realized that um, they really needed to pick up the pace a little bit, especially with a martial arts RPG. You, you want to be having like fast and furious moves and make them look real, really elegant. So they moved to a real-time system, but it's definitely not button-mashing combos, because obviously we want a lot of RPG guys who may not groove on that to really get into the combat. It's more about choosing the right moves, the right style versus the specific foes. For example, with spirits, um, you cannot use weapons. You have to use either a magical or a physical attack. Um, knowing when when to use the right move, when to block, when to position yourself around an opponent's shield. These are all part of the real-time combat system in Jade. There's also a, a follower system that you can use, and from what I understand, it's not really like the party system in uh, games like uh, KOTOR or things like that, in that you have a whole party of characters that you bring around with you. Um, could you maybe go into uh, a little bit of the differences between the party system of some other games and the follower system in Jade Empire? Sure. I think the main difference, sorry, the main difference in the, the follower system with uh, Jade Empire is that you won't have the entire, you know, an entire group of people trailing behind you at any one time. Um, in, in Jade Empire, the follower system is limited to one person that you select um, who will come with you, and they can assume either an active combatant role or they can, um, they can assume a more uh, passive role, passive support role. And that all depends on how involved you want to follow in your combat. If you feel like you're really tough and you want to stay the hero of the story, you, you tell your follower to hang back. Um, they can still provide some useful abilities and buffs and things like that, but it is a different, you know, it is a different type of uh, follower system as compared to other games. Uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about some of the um, some of the movies and books that the uh, that the team watched. They've gone through such a list, an exhaustive list of martial arts movies. Everything from like the high concept stuff. I mean, they, they've all seen Hero. They've all seen House of Flying Daggers. They've all seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Um, all the way from that to you know some pretty dated, maybe Bruce Lee, Chop Saki flicks. They've run it all. I, I don't want anyone to get the impression that there's you know a lot of cheese in Jade Empire. But I will say that at occasional points in the game, if for any martial arts aficionado, you will come across a character which you will recognize from a really esoteric movie, and that's a, a nod out to you. Um, we've all seen uh, the pictures of uh, Furious Ming and uh, Wu the Lotus Blossom. Um, could you maybe talk about some of the other characters we'll be seeing in the game, either playable or non-playable -char characters? Oh, sure. Um, you know, in addition to Wu, for example, uh, you know, female playable characters, uh, there is Radiant Gen Z, who is definitely a uh, faster type of character. Um, she's, you know, very agile, moves around a lot. Uh, and then also there's Scholarling, which uh, she is a more voluptuous uh, playable character. And she, interestingly enough, is very schooled, uh, very schooled in the mystical arts. So she will be very high in using her chi and, and, and mystical attacks. Uh, on the male side, in addition to, uh, you know, Furious Ming, we've got Tiger Shen, who's like, he's kind of a brick. He's a really strong guy, you know, really buff. Also, with our limited edition, I don't know if you knew this or not, we will have an exclusive character there, Monk Zhang, who wields an exclusive weapon. And we're, he's really, for those people who've always wanted to play that Shaolin Monk character, um, the only way you can get it is through the limited edition. But which of the female characters is the hottest? I think that's a very subjective call, right? <laughs> I would say after a review of all three of them, uh, Scholar Lang, the uh, the more voluptuous beauty, she's uh, she's my gal. Sounds good. Uh, what else can we expect from the uh, limited edition game aside from the uh, exclusive character? Uh, in addition to this exclusive character, for everybody who's always been interested in like uh, the making of of games, there is a making of uh, you know video that's going to be included on that, and uh, I, I know that you know. The team spent a lot of time up at Bioware. They got a lot of footage, for example, of our mocap sessions and then mapping it back to the actual the martial arts. Stuff like that's really cool. Uh, is it going to be um, separate packaging, uh, similar to the, the, the nice Halo 2 limited edition box that came out? 
Yeah, in fact, we're really excited about the packaging. It's um, it's a variant of the uh, Jade Empire uh, standard packaging, except with a holograph, a foil holographic front. So for anybody who really wants the sexy packaging, that's the one to get. And uh, it's the same price as the regular, so I don't know why you wouldn't get it if you could. Some of the characters are, are have different skills, like uh, one might be use magic more, while other will use combat. Um, can you... Um, when you select your character in the beginning, do you have to choose one of those types of strengths and then stick with it, or can you kind of branch out as you go along? Um, well, first of all, when you select a specific character, you can choose to customize that character. So you could decide, you know what, I like Wu, I like the look of Wu, but I want to customize her so that she's actually got more strength than, um, you know, than Spirit, for example. And, you know, she can actually, you know, you can actually customize her to do that. Um, and then later on, obviously it's an RPG, so there'll be an opportunity to gain experience points and level up. And as you level up, you can definitely change, you know, you know, your attributes and how how your strengths are being assigned to different styles. As an Asian American, how do you feel uh, about a bunch of Canadian white people making a game about Asians? <laughs> I feel very flattered, actually. <laughs> I got, uh, I got, a, actually, I got a similar question like that in Japan, and I, I explained to the Japanese it's only fair because uh, Japanese have been making uh, kind of medieval feudal fantasy games for many years, and they've just done fine with it. Well, there you go. Now you have the Asian American perspective on Jade Empire. When can we expect to see Jade Empire in stores? Uh, we will be on shelf, uh, at least in North America, on April 14th. April 14th. Well, be sure to pick it up then. Thank you, Chris.